Hello and welcome to Pivot Go Profiles. My name is Doug Ward and I work in the Sales and Partnerships team here at Pivot Go. This is a series about the power of science to data science, Pivot Go's data science bootcamp, and what some of the 700 fellows are doing having graduated. I'm really pleased to be speaking to Alexia today, who's a specialist broad data scientist at Pajantis and was in the STDS class of 2018 and also holds a PhD in quantum information, information theory. Hi Alexia, how are you? Hi Doug, I'm good, and you? Yes, yes, very well, thanks. Uh, to kick off, are you okay to talk about yourself and, and your role at the moment? And then uh, we'll get into some quick fire questions about you. Okay, um, so well, uh, I'm from Belgium and I moved to Barcelona to do a PhD in quantum information theory, as you said. And um, yeah, during my PhD, I heard about the program in SODS and uh, I applied to it. And I did a project that was really cool and it was about uh, fraud detection and pro fraud prevention. And it turned out that a few months later, just after I defended my PhD, I was able to find a job very quickly as a, a fraud data scientist at Pagantis. So at the moment, well, Pagantis is a company uh, that offers e-commerce. And so we've got obviously a decision engine that has to accept or reject applications from a consumer uh, willing to buy something online and pay later. And so for that, uh, uh, we've been, with my team, we've been designing algorithms um, for, for prevention, for detection, and also doing analysis uh, of fraud cases. Uh, for example, trying to find features that could be useful for the next model, or trying to put things into place that we find in previous cases that could block um, future ones. Very interesting. So the, I guess the project that you did in SGDS uh, really affected the kind of the, the career choice or what, what came out, um, what you end up doing now. Yeah, that's true. It wasn't just um, um, entering data science, it was also even uh, specializing into a specific subject. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's get stuck into some of these uh, quick fire questions. Uh, here we go. What's your secret talent? Um, I, I dance uh, swing and ninja hop. Nice. Uh, what, what languages do you speak? Um, my native language is French, obviously, and I also speak Greek and Spanish. Right, well, and English. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what topic could you spend hours talking about? I really like history. Um, for example, I, I really like uh, learning about fun facts about history. When the pandemic started, I was reading about pandemics throughout the ages. And so it's something that I really like discussing. Um, but on, on a more, uh, on a less serious note, I like cats and talking about cats. <laughs> cats. <laughs> yeah, universal. Yeah. Uh, what rational fears do you have? I'm afraid of uh, snails and slugs. Snails and slugs, wow. Yeah, that's... I've never heard irrational. of that one before. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's why it's irrational. Um, could, if you could predict anything with data science, what would it be? Mm, I, I think it would be great if we could uh, somehow make as many predictions as possible in different medical fields. I think at the moment, it's mostly, for example, in imaging that data science can be useful, but uh, I don't know how you do how you do it to get all the data, but if you could be able to predict the uh, likeness of getting a disease or things like that, that would be great. Nice, yeah, yeah, very useful to society as a whole. Uh, what would your dream job be? Um, I think it's quite a, a common answer for a data scientist, but I would like to uh, continue the same sort of job that I'm doing, like technically, but in a, a field that maybe um, I'm more passionate about, like um, environment, um, education, or health. Okay, yeah, nice. Yeah, that is very common, actually, for sure. Uh, bearing in mind these are relatively quick fire questions, um, what was the worst part of your PhD? I think the first few months 
I didn't understand anything in meetings and yeah, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay, uh, a lot of people um, talk about how it's quite a quite a lonely pursuit, um, but it's interesting, and and that's more towards the end. But it's interesting that yours is uh, at the beginning. Um, what was the best part of your PhD? I really liked uh, going to conferences, and there was one in particular in the Pyrenees uh, that lasted a couple of weeks that I really liked a lot. Yeah. Okay, that makes total sense. Um, yeah. Who's, the, who's been the most influential person for you? Um, I think professionally, I would say um, a colleague of mine at the institute where I did my PhD who introduced me to machine learning, uh, my colleague Peter. What is the most underrated thing you know about? I don't know how underrated it is, but I really, uh, I discovered during SOBS uh, organizational tools like Kanban boards, and I, I love them. I use them also in my personal life. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I've thought about that, but um, perhaps I'm, I'm not quite organized enough to make the leap, you know. <laughs> um, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Um, so that's a bit related to the answer about the dream job um, hopefully in a data science role at, uh, in one of the fields that I'm more passionate about. And I also like to start um, at some point supervising people and um, maybe having my own team at some point. Nice. I guess the, the last one, these quick fire questions. Um, what do you think will change the most in the next five years in, uh, in the data science field as a whole? Um, I think that with the things like Amazon Web Services or Azure by Microsoft developing and growing, um, I assume that a lot of data scientists in the industry are going to spend less time working on the algorithms themselves. And then on the other hand, there'll be people developing these services and algorithms and more uh, with a more of a research focus. So I think there's going to be a bit of a separation there. Okay, interesting. So there, there'll be more people that work predominantly in integration and deployment and that side of things, and then people who are real specialists in, in the modeling. I think so. Interesting. Jumping into a more of a longer form uh, question. Uh, what would you say to anyone thinking about becoming a data scientist or moving from research science or a PhD to uh, industry? Um, well, I'd say that, uh, first of all, it's not that hard to adapt. I, I think that uh, myself, when I was uh, going to uh, make the change, I was afraid that uh, I wasn't a good fit for um, a more corporate environment or something like that, but I came quite quickly and other uh, colleagues told me the same, that uh, had a similar uh, background told me the same. And then I had uh, advice to really not hesitate to learn new tools and to use any opportunity that's uh, presented to you to learn new techniques or new tools. Uh, even if maybe the task is a bit boring, but you get to learn a new database or a new uh, way of coding, it's, I mean, it might be always useful in the future. And uh, I think um, it's a job that asks for a lot of flexibility on the part of the data scientist. So that's, uh, that's something I think to keep in mind. Great. What was what? What do you mean by the um, the flexibility side of things? Do you, do you expand on that a little bit? Um, yes. Uh, well, let's say in, comparing to to my experience during my PhD, I'd say in the PhD I was expected to get to become more and more of an expert on on one specific subject. Whereas now in my job, I'm uh, really asked to do different tasks and. Um, for example, I started uh, I started learning data science with Python, but uh, in my current company, people use R, so I switched to using R. And well, I wasn't super happy at the beginning, but then I grew, I've grown to like it a lot. And uh, um, I think that now I'm actually better at R than Python. So <laughs> uh, I think that you you might be asked to to learn a lot of new things and like don't hesitate, do it, and it's just gonna help you grow as a as a professional. Great. So jump into um, opportunities, even if they don't immediately look appealing, perhaps. <laughs> um, over the years that you've worked with data science, what's been one of your key learnings uh, personally? I guess 
jumping into new opportunities when you perhaps aren't particularly keen on it is definitely important. Are there, are there any others that you think are, are really valuable? Um, I would say that uh, I learned that um, focusing on the product is also something really important and not just on the on the technical aspects, but um, that if you if you want to start being able to make some good suggestions to um, for the projects to 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 go forward, you also need to you also need to know the product well and to mm. keep learning about it. And even if uh, it's an industry that you maybe don't have any background in, I would say that that was uh, that's learning to to also be interested in the product and not only in the technical part is uh, something that uh, well that may sound quite obvious but that in, in the end is um, is really important yeah i guess yeah i guess it depends what part of the business you're in right um, and how big the company mm -hmm. is because it's really easy if you're in a larger company just to, to have no visibility of what the end user is thinking or their process within using the product um, and yeah, you're just kind of down your own rabbit hole. And uh, perhaps, you know, your targets are structured around that rabbit hole and to like pop your head up every now and then. Yeah, you can see that. Sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, I imagine also, for example, if you if you work in consultancy, the product might change all the time. So then it's perhaps less easy to do, but yeah, it's, uh, I think it's something that um, that is very positive. Fantastic. Um, well, thanks so much for your time today, Alexa. I really appreciate it. I know you're really busy, um, so I'll let you go, but I really enjoyed our conversation. Uh, if you want to contact Alexa, I'll, um, she'll be tagged or somewhere surrounding this post um, or in the description. Um, thanks very much for your time, Alexa, and um, Thank you, take care. Bye. Thank you.